Planksty, Wikipedia article audio. Planksty is an Irish folk music band formed in January 1972, 99100 consisting initially of Christy Moore, Andy Irvine, Donald Lunny, and Liam O'Flynn. They quickly revolutionized and popularized Irish folk music, touring and recording to great acclaim. History Subsequently, Johnny Moynihan, Paul Brady, Matt Malloy, Bill Wellen, Nola Casey and, briefly, Noel Hill and Tony Linane were also temporary members. Planksty broke up twice first in December 1975, 220 and again in April 1983, 306 The original quartet reunited in October 2003, 316 and their final performance was on January 31, 2005, 324. Formation and First Run Christy Moore and Donald Lunny had been friends since school days in Newbridge, County Kildare, Lunny having taught Moore how to play both guitar and Bowden. 317 Before the formation of Planksty, Lunny had been playing in a duet with Andy Irvine after the latter's return from Eastern Europe, 8384 and they had also launched their own folk club, downstairs at Slatery's, called the Mugs Gig. 95 Liam O'Flynn was playing in public and on the radio, and was well respected in traditional folk. Circles, 93-94 All members were familiar with one another's work to varying degrees, but were first brought together during the summer of 1971 to record Moore's second solo album, Prosperous, at his sister's house, in the village of the same name. 7991. Reunion and Second Run In January 1972, the four joined forces to form Planksty, 97100 recording their first single, Three Drunken Maidens Slash S.I. Biag, S.I. Moore, in Trend Studios on January 18, 1972, 101 The band performed en route S. The Late. Late show the following Saturday, 102 and played their first show on March 6, a 30-minute set at the Muggs gig on a bill that included balladeer Patty Riley, 103 they then assumed a weekly residency at the Muggs gig, began rehearsing, and started playing live around Ireland. 104 No Disco Documentary the group's first major performance opening for Donovan at the Hangar in Galway, at Easter 1972 was a huge success, 112-116 neither the audience nor the band knew what to expect, and both were pleasantly surprised. Irvine, unable to see the audience through the glare of the stage lights, was worried that the crowd might be on the verge of rioting. It took him several minutes to realize that what he was hearing was the expression of their enthusiasm, 112 A rough quality recording of the song Raggle Taggle Gypsy from this concert was included on the 2004 retrospective, Christy Moore The Box Set, 1964-2004, complete with the audience's reaction. The Third Coming Planksty's first single, Three Drunken Maidens, was released by their manager Day Kelly's label, Ruby Records, reaching number seven in the Irish charts. The next single, a re recording of The Cliffs of Dunine, previously recorded for the Prosperous album, made it to number three. Two full albums followed, Planksty. 129145 recorded at Command Studios in London, 144 during September 1972, 132 and the Well Below the Valley, 169186 recorded at the Escape Studios in Kent, from June 18, 1973, 170. 
the humors of Planxty. The group's increasing popularity led to heavy touring throughout Ireland, Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and Northern Europe. Tired of constant touring and wishing to explore other musical avenues, Lunny left Planxty at the start of September 1973, playing his last gig with the band at the Edinburgh Festival. 184-185 he would eventually end up a member of the Bothy band. Johnny Moynihan, who had played with Irvine in Sweeney's Men, joined at this point, playing mandolin, bouzouki, fiddle, tin whistle, and singing. This line-up, with contributions from Lunny, would record Planxty's third album, Cold Blow and the Rainy Night, 189-202 in Sarm Studios. Whitechapel in London during August 1974, 192-193. LAPD Usher's Island Etymology Influences Next to leave, shortly after the making of this album, was Moore, who had a desire to return to his solo career and perform from a larger repertoire of songs. 207 The split was amicable, and while Paul Brady was recruited to fill the gap in September 1974, 209 more stayed on with him in the band until October, 214 after his departure, the Irvine-Moynihan-Brady-O'Flynn lineup toured extensively but released no recordings before playing their final show in Brussels on December 5, 1975, 220. After the breakup, Moynihan retreated into obscurity, continuing to perform occasionally, but rarely recording, 254 Irvine and Brady toured together as a duo and, in August 1976, recorded an album at the Rockfield Studios, Andy Irvine slash Paul Brady, 243-247 produced by Lunny who also plays on most tracks, and with Kevin Burke on fiddle. For a while, Irvine continued to tour with Brady in Ireland and in the UK, and also with Mick Hanley, predominantly in Europe. In 1978, Brady released a solo album including Irvine, Tommy Peoples, and Lunny, who also produced it, 247. The original four members of Planxty, however, continued to encounter each other socially, on the stage, and in the studio, 253. This eventually led to a reunion encouraged by music promoter Kevin Flynn. 254-256 who would become their manager. They were joined this time by Matt Malloy, who had been a member of the Bothy band with Lunny and was also a close friend of O'Flynn's, 256-257 starting rehearsals at Malloy's home on Tuesday, September 19, 1978. 259 This lineup would go on a mammoth European tour the following year from April 15 to June 11, 1979, during which the band played 47 concerts in 58 days, in the UK, Germany, Switzerland, Belgium, France, and Ireland, 259-262. From 18 to June 30, 1979, Planxty recorded their fourth album, After the Break, at the Windmill Lane Studios in Dublin, produced by Lunny and released on the Terror Records label, 262-267 Malloy would leave the group to join the Chieftains shortly after the album was recorded, 268 and remains with them to this day. In between the Planxty activity, Irvine squeezed in tours in Europe with Lunny, Mick Hanley, and Gary O'Byrne. He also recorded his first solo album, Rainy Sundays. Windy Dreams, at Windmill Lane Studios in late 1979, produced by Donald Lunny and released on Terra Records in 1980, 273-274.
On February 28, 1980, Planxty headlined the Sense of Ireland concert at the Royal Albert Hall in London. When they returned to Ireland, they recorded two programmes for Root at the Pavilion Theatre in Dunloare, then started rehearsals at Kilkia Castle in Castle Dermot, County Kildare with two musicians from County Clare, concertina player Noel Hill and fiddler Tony Linane. The six-member line-up of Moore, Irvine, Lunny, O'Flynn, Hill and Linane were joined by Matt Malloy and keyboardist Bill Wellen, to record the band's fifth album, The Woman I Loved So Well, at Windmill Lane Studios over two periods, 23-29 April and 16-19 May, 275-281 The album was wrapped up with a reception at Windmill Lane Studios on June 9, 1980. 280. The band began touring as a four-piece during the summer of 1980, playing a tour of Italian castles in July and returning to the Boys of Belisodere Festival on August 9, joined by Wellen and a young cork fiddler, Nolag Casey. 281-282 shows around this time would feature the four-piece band for the first set, with Wellen and Casey joining in for the second set. This lineup played a week of shows at the Olympia Theatre in Dublin on 18-23 August 1980, 283 taped for a potential live album, which eventually emerged in 1987 as the unlicensed release The Best of Planxty Live, 283-285 This lineup, augmented by a full orchestra and rhythm section, would also record Time Dance in 1981 as part of the Eurovision Song Contest. Time Dance was the genesis for what Wellen would later develop into River Dance. 296 299. The six piece Planxty continued to tour, but began to drift apart. O'Flynn took on a project with Sean Davy, The Brendan Voyage, 287 more, and Lunny eager to experiment with a rhythm section and a different, more political, song set, formed Moving Hearts, 290 Lunny also kept busy producing albums by other artists. The original four-piece lineup played their last show together on August 24, 1982, at the National Stadium in Dublin, 301 Nevertheless, the band recorded one final album at Windmill Lane Studios for the Wii label in late October and early November 1982, Words and Music, 301-304 which also featured contributions from fiddler James Kelly and Moving Hearts bass guitarist Eogan O'Neill. The divided attention of two bands proved too much and, in early 1983, Lunny and Moore left to concentrate on Moving Hearts, 304 Irvine, O'Flynn and Wellen decided to continue as Planxty, retaining fiddler James Kelly and also recruiting Artie McGlynn of County Tyrone on guitar, plus Galway S. Dolores Keane on vocals and a plethora of traditional instruments, 304 Irvine would later dub this line-up Planxty too far as the personnel and musical focus, now more dominated by Wellen, was far removed from the original Planxty, 304. A tour of Ireland in spring of 1983, including the National Stadium in Dublin on April 27, would be the end of the group, 306 in the words of Andy Irvine. Radisson SAS Hotel in Galway, Point Theatre in Dublin, Waterfront Hall in Belfast, Barbican Centre in London, 322-326. Although Moore, Irvine, Lunny and O'Flynn would continue to meet from time to time and perform occasionally in various combinations during professional engagements and even play together as a foursome in the privacy of Moore's house at least once rumours of putative reunions circulated for over two decades, 314-315. In late 2002, 
broadcaster and journalist Leagues O'Toole was working as presenter and researcher for the Root television show No Disco and persuaded the program editor, Rory Cobby, to develop a one-off documentary about Planksty, 309. O'Toole proceeded with interviewing Moore, Irvine, and O'Flynn but Lunny, who was living in Japan, was unavailable. After also shooting links at key landmarks from the Planksty history, 310-314 the program aired on March 3, 2003, receiving a phenomenal response from the public and some very positive feedback from the Planksty members themselves. In a final comment about the constant speculation of the original lineup regrouping, Moore had stated, on camera, there's nobody longs for it more than myself and the other three guys. Definitely the time is right. Let's go for it. 314. On Tuesday, October 7, 2003, O'Toole received a postcard from Moore reading, There might be something of interest happening on Saturday. I'll be in touch. 316 It turned out that Patty Doherty, owner of the Royal Spa Hotel in Liz Dunvarna, had arranged for the band's use of the hotel's old dining room for rehearsals, which led to a one-off concert there in front of 200 people on October 11, 2003, 316 more, on stage, credited the No Disco documentary with inspiring the reunion. 316. Pleased with the results and the experience of playing together again, the original Planksty Quartet agreed to the longed for reunion, 12 and would perform together again, on and off, for a period of just over a year. First, they played a series of concerts at the Glore Theatre in Ennis, County Clare, and at Vicar Street in Dublin. 317 which were recorded and from which selected material was released on the CD Live 2004 and its associated DVD. In late 2004 and early 2005, 322 326 another round of concerts took place at the following venues. Planksty remained a four-piece throughout this period, with more occasionally playing keyboards. Since then, there has been no further activity, Moore has said he would not participate in another reunion, but gave his blessing to the others for their future use of the Planksty name. Leagues O'Toole documented the history and development of the group in the biography The Humors of Planksty, which was published by Hotter Headline in 2006. Friday January 20, 2012 ushered in the inaugural gig, at Dublin's Vicar Street, of a quartet including three members of the original Planksty, calling themselves LAPD, after the initials of their first names, Liam O'Flynn, Andy Irvine, Patty Glacken, and Donald Lunny. They played a set combining tunes and songs from the repertoires of LAPD performed only occasionally, to rave reviews, but never recorded before their final performance, which took place at Sligo Live, on Saturday, October 26, 2013. When O'Flynn resigned from LAPD, Irvine, Lunny, and Glacken were joined by Michael McGoldrick and John Doyle to form a new group named Usher's Island. Planksty was a word used by people who named works by Harper Tullo O'Carrollan after his death, and is believed to denote a tribute to a particular person, Planksty Irwin, for example, would be in honor of Colonel John Irwin of Sligo. Planksty is thought to be a corruption of the Irish word and popular toast slaint, meaning good health. Another possible explanation is that it is derived from the Latin planctus, a medieval lament. Discography Regardless of its origin, the moniker, which replaced the provisional clad, turned out to be a good fit, 
as O'Carolan's music would play an important part in the band's repertoire. A formative influence on Planxty, and in particular on Moore, was the singing of Irish traveller John Jack O'Reilly who hailed from Boyle, C.O. Roscommon. It was from Riley that Moore learned Raggle Taggle Gypsy, which was recorded for the first Planks D album, in addition to The Well Below the Valley, which appeared on The Well Below the Valley. Moore later dipped into Riley's songbook again for an updated version of the lengthy ballad Lord Baker, which was featured on Planks D's 1983 album Words and Music. Riley died in 1969 at the age of 44, shortly after being found beneath his coats in the top room of his dwelling in Boyle by Tom Munnelly, who had originally collected his songs for archiving. The music of Tullo O'Carolan appeared on a number of Planks D albums, played by O'Flynn on the pipes. Much of this music first came to the attention of the band through the work of seminal Irish composer Sean O'Riata and his group Seol Tuarai Chualan. Singles Studio Albums Live Albums Planksty, Jenny's Wedding Slash The Virginia Slash Garrett Berries, Patty Canny's, The Jolly Beggar Slash The Wise Maid, Arthur McBride, as I Roved Out, The Blacksmith Slash Blacksmithereens and West Coast of Clare, Irvine and Lunny, My Heart's Tonight in Ireland Slash West Clare Reel, Braes of Money More, Suleiman's Copan Itza, The Dream Slash Indiana, O'Donoghue's and soon N.I. Dwib here, O'Flynn and Glacken, Kitty's Rambles Slash Humors of Ennis Tymon, the Green Island Slash Bantry Hornpipe, Young Tom Ennis Slash Nora Crean, A Rainy Day Slash The Shaw's Keen, Two Flings, Speed the Plough Slash Colonel Fraser and the Gold Ring. Compilations With Christy Moore Filmography Bibliography <laughs>